quick, before we get started, I need you to subscribe to the channel. Or else this spider right here, well, he's gonna crawl right into your mouth while you sleep. And we wouldn't want that. Hi, my name's Yaman, and today we're gonna talk about Spongebob Season 12. You know, Spongebob Season 12 is full of easter eggs. From pop culture references to in-universe callbacks dating all the way back to the very first seasons. In this video, we'll be taking a closer look at some of these late-era episodes, and some of the gags you might have missed. So, without further ado, here are some more secret easter eggs and references hidden in Spongebob Season 12. Before we get started though, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Also, comment down below what your favorite episode of Spongebob Season 12 is. That way you'll enter into our monthly shoutout giveaway. We get a look at the nightly activities of Spongebob and Plankton's pets in the episode Gary and Spot, where the two meet up and sneak out of their owner's houses to get up to some mischief around town. After narrowly escaping animal control of the Krusty Krab, they go to hide out in an abandoned shipwreck where their other animal buddies are already holed up and ready to party. Among the other animals at the shipwreck is Mystery, SpongeBob's temporary but beloved pet from My Pretty Seahorse. It's already up to battle. Luckily for them, Gary and Spot are already pals with everyone here. Let's get this party started! What the? Hey, Squidward! Still riding to work on a machine, I see. Don't say anything, Squidward. Remember your karma. <laughs> In the nitwitting, Patrick reveals that he's a member of a club called the Empty Head Club, where guys like him can give their powerful intellects a much needed rest. SpongeBob wants to join, and he checks his brain at the door. And pretty soon, it's time for the nitwitting where they all go out and patrol the city. At one point, when one of them causes a traffic jam, you can see one of the garbage men from Sanitation and Sanity in his truck. When SpongeBob starts showing too much thinking ability, though, it's decided that he is not as brainless as some of the other club members and has to go. He sadly leaves, but soon finds himself lost and confused, still without his brain. Eventually, he ends up at a dumpster until Patrick shows up to return his thinking thingy. The graffiti in the dumpster has a number of references to past episodes. There's Doodle Bob, the Squidward Smells graffiti that was on the Krusty Krab dumpster in Sailor Mouth, I'm Dirty Dan referencing Survival of Idiots, as well as Man Ray was here. Could you just smile? Come in, base. We found the trash flingers. Oh, there you are! You forgot your thinking thingy! I wasn't sure which one was yours, buddy. Uh, now my name's Buddy! So duh! In the Ballad of Filthy Muck, Poor Patrick gets kicked out of the Krusty Krab for being too smelly. But instead of taking Mr. Krab's advice to clean up his act, Patrick decides that he is going to continue to be revolting, and he really leans into his new identity. He plays in trash until he's so covered in filth that he becomes unrecognizable and is just a walking pile of, well, filthy muck. When he's spotted, the cryptic creature Filthy Muck then becomes legendary in Bikini Bottom. He even gets a picture in the newspaper resembling the pose in the Patterson-Gimli film, aka one of the most famous supposed Bigfoot sightings. At one point, we also see a fish with a huge red nose looking at the newspaper and saying, My schnozzula! Referencing Jimmy Durante, who referenced to his nose as such. Mother. Amazing! The episode Swamp Mates features an already weird playdate between Bubble Bass and Patrick. They gets even weirder when Patrick flushes them into the swamp. After a lot of complaining from Bubble Bass, they spot some kind of shadowy villain making off with his missing Wonder Whale action figure. 
They quickly get into some trouble with some of the local alligators and get chased through the swamp, which we see again during One Trick Sponge while Sandy's disembodied head is observing in another dimension. <laughs> Also in One Trick Sponge, we get a couple other references, one is right at the beginning, when Spongebob reveals that he's finally learned a magic trick that he's been trying to learn ever since he was a sponge boy. This is a nod to the very first Spongebob concept and his original name, Sponge Boy. We also get a little callback to the episode Party Pooper Pants, with Spongebob donning the same bunny suit he wore in that episode, when he finally gets to perform the trick. <laughs> The magic trick! Huh? Sorry, Gary, but I've been trying to learn this trick since I was a sponge boy. Oh, I gotta show Patrick! <laughs> oh. Take losing the topic cards and the phone and the punch bowl, but I was supposed to lead the bunny up! This is a bunch of articles! I'm breaking in! Well, well, well. What do we have here? A burglar bunny. The Krusty Slammer starts out with Plankton pulling another little scheme, this time vandalizing the Krusty Krab and other random buildings in an attempt to defame Mr. Krabs. He quickly gets apprehended, but they find out that the Bikini Bottom prison is too full to put him there. Instead of letting Plankton go free, Mr. Krabs kindly offers to let the city lock up prisoners at the Krusty Krab. So the Krusty Krab turns into a full-fledged prison, with good old corrupt Mr. Krabs accepting a hefty payment. And we see quite a few returning bad guys. Dorsal Dan and Sticky Fins Whiting from the Getaway make a reappearance, as well as the Tattletail Strangler and some of the prisoners from Jailbreak. Lock up your hunger, go away to keep! So he's going to jail, right? Who? Strangler? Yeah, Strangler. Oh yeah, he's going to jail for a long time. Hey, that looks like me! 